Coming soon, to Hastings Mystery Theater. The Millerson Case, it's a 1947 crime doctor mystery. Dr. Ordway has to investigate the mountain folk with their petty jealousies to find a murderer among them. Hastings Mystery Theater is reaching out to the nations of the world, by way of the internet, to bring you these classic mystery movies from the 1930s and 40s. Earlier in 2023 we had a visit from sisters Donna and Beth, from the state of Indiana, who are fans of our show. We would love for other viewers to send us their photos, and tell us where they are watching from. Continue to watch Hastings Mystery Theater, from right here in Hastings, Michigan, USA. It seems that you like watching these old mystery films from the 1930s and 40s as much as we all do. If you'd like to show your appreciation in a tangible way, then why not share a little love by giving us a one-time small donation? We'd appreciate that, as it will encourage us to continue on with this work of bringing these forgotten gems to you on a regular basis. Simply click on the donate link below, in this video's description, and while you're right there you can click on our mystery merch shop as well or visit us on Facebook, or find our free bonus movie link. Thank you so much. Now here's Randall Schaefer. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us in 1936 19... for a Chesterfield production, Lady Luck. This is the story of Mamie Murphy a humble manicurist who dreams of marrying a rich man someday. She refuses to date just any man, waiting for the right rich one to come along. David Haynes is a reporter who loves Mamie, but she refuses to date him because he's not rich. Mamie plays the lottery every day, and one day she wins $2,500 with a chance to win $150,000 more, and suddenly a not-so-nice man is interested in her, or at least in her money. Well, he is murdered, and Mamie is the main suspect. Her not-rich friend, David Haynes, is convinced she is not guilty. This movie was made in 1936, during the Depression, and films with the theme of money cannot buy happiness were very common. This one had that theme, as well as the theme, love conquers all. Patricia Farr plays Mamie Murphy. She was born in Kansas City in 1913, but ended up in Los Angeles where she was discovered by a movie producer while working as an usher in a movie theater. She made her first movie in 1931 and worked steadily in B-movies until health failed in 1945. She died of cancer in 1948. Duncan Ronaldo plays tonight's murder victim. He would go on to play the Cisco Kid in the early 1950s TV show of the same name. Let's return to 1936 to see if Mamie Murphy will finally put love ahead of money. Enjoy Lady Luck. music of Ben Winchell's orchestra, coming to you from the Park Plaza Tea Room. Tea Room? But try not, love, turn that off. Turn it off, Joe. Pretty good. If I like you who owns a big nightclub, don't like music from a ladies' tea room. To tell me, Johnny. Mr. Morelli to you. That's telling him. And Miss Murphy to you. <laughs> My hands cold or something? No, they're plenty warm. Then what's the matter with it? They don't mind their own business. Say, she acts like she's got a boyfriend, is that it? No, but many fellas come in here would like to be. 
Hey, Mammy? There's one guy be hanging around here for months. He gets shaved so often, he's got his face raw. Uh, newspaper reporter. Reporter, eh? Say, is it true what they say? When a man bites a dog, it's news? Get a man to bite you and find out. How about finishing your job on these nails? Well, what's the matter with them? Oh, they need more polish. So does their owner. All right. You know, if you like me like I like you... No wife could cut our love in two. Say, I like that. Sure, all kids like Mother Goose. Mother Goose? Who is she? She's the one that wrote Frankie and Johnny. Oh, quit the kidding. Listen, I've been wanting to talk to you for months. That's too long to talk to anyone. Oh, but I've got something to ask you. The answer is no. You and I could get along swell. Yeah, like a couple of settlers' powders. Why don't you come down to my place tonight? We could have a nice talk. No, thanks. High places make me dizzy. But it doesn't cost you a nickel. You know that. Yeah, but what can you get in a nightclub for a nickel? <laughs> we hate to butt in on you, Chief, but Rita wants to see you down at the club right away. For what? It's okay that new dance number for tonight. Who told her I was here? Me. Gee, boss, I forgot. I ought to break your neck. I'm sorry, boss, but memory ain't what it used to be. Maybe it never was. Say, now I know why Rita blows up when I tell her the way you was. How do you like that? My partner is jealous of you, and she doesn't even know you. Yeah, but she knows you. All right, let's skip that. Tell Rita I'll be down right away. I'll scram. Okay, Chief. Hey, Joe. Let me see those hands. Oh, turn them over. Look at boss. We got a lot of work to do. We better beat it. You ain't going anywhere until you get those nails manicured. Manicure? No, boss. Dennis is bad enough. Get back there and sit down. Here's ten bucks. Give him the words. Don't you want your change? How could there be any coming after you get through with those smoked hams? If there is any, bring it down to the club to me. Tonight. It's too bad, Joe. I'm awfully sorry. Sorry about what? Me hands? No, about the death in your family. You're kidding. Ain't even nobody sick. No? Well, then what are you in mourning for? Gee, that's from changing the tire. Oh. Good afternoon, Mr. Conroy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Conroy. Good afternoon, Miss Murphy. Oh, Mr. Conroy. How are you? Oh, quite well, thanks. Very busy, as usual. Sam, turn on the radio for Mr. Conroy. Yes, ma'am. Seem to have quite a career cut out for you. You're telling me. Oh, Mr. Conroy. Oh, hello. I seem to have seen you somewhere. Oh, yes, the blue moon. That's our hangout. I mean headquarters. Gee, I never even been inside the blue moon. I bet it's a gorgeous place, huh? Bed? Ready, Mr. Conroy. It must be wonderful to be wealthy like Mr. Conroy. Yeah, a lot of money ain't hard to do. He's such a refined gentleman. Sure, he's awful refined. Dave Haynes! What's the name of that dame at the barber shop you're nuts about? I'm not nuts about any barber shop. The girl, you chump. What's her name? Oh, Mamie. Mamie Murphy. Yeah? Well, get an eyeful of that. Mamie Murphy. Go and get a story. Go and get a story? You told me the next time I went there, you'd fire me. All right, all right, but get going. That's that. 
Look at them shine. Who would ever thought a manicure could change a guy's appearance like that? Thanks, Toots. Gee, I wish my mother was still alive. This would be the biggest day of her life. Dance Parade will be heard tomorrow at the same hour. We bring you at this time our regular afternoon news broadcast. Today's news starts with a cable of interest throughout the world, as names of persons drawing horses in the forthcoming sweepstakes were announced. Among the fortunate New Yorkers are Lewis Adam, Abe Silverstein of the Bronx, Betty Jackson, Nick Ellis, and Mamie Murphy. Miss Murphy's ticket is on Lady Luck, winner of the sweepstakes last year. This means that these lucky New Yorkers will automatically receive $2,500 each with the chance of winning a grand prize of $150,000. A long awaited decision by the Supreme Court concerning. <laughs> There, drink this. You'll soon be all right. Where's Mamie? In there. She isn't feeling so well. She'll feel plenty well when she hears the news I've got for her. Where are you going? Going to see Mamie Murphy. Who are you? Well, I'm, I'm her, uh, you know. Uh, oh, I see. In that case, I think it'll be all right. Thank you. What's the matter, honey? I've had a shock. I told you never to touch electric fixtures when your hands were wet. I know, but this one came from the radio. Well, the radio's electric, isn't it? Never mind, skip it, Dave. Okay, okay, okay. I wonder what you'd do if you were to suddenly receive a piece of startling news. I'd faint. Supposing it were good news? I'd still faint. How do you know? I did. It's no use to hold it back any longer, Dave. I know about my drawing that horse. And about winning at least $2,500? Yes. And possibly 150,000 more? That's when I fainted. You know, I wish you and I had gotten married before this thing happened to you. Why? Well, because now people will think I'm marrying you for your money. Oh, no, they won't. Why not? Because you and I are not getting married, and that's final. Newspapers call their last edition final, but they always get out another the next day. Let's not talk about it now. But we've got to talk about it. I can't think of anything else. All right, Dave, listen. I don't intend to go on being poor. I want money, lots of money, and all the luxuries it will buy. That's a brand new idea. When did it come to you? When I watched my mother slaving her life away and realized I was headed for the same thing. Supposing you don't win this 150 grand? There are other swell ways of getting money. A wealthy marriage, a stage, or a movie career. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. What about going down to the Blue Moon with me tonight to celebrate your big break? No, thanks. I'm going to bed early. Good news gets me down. Hello. Feeling better, Miss Murphy? Yes, thank you. I came in to make a suggestion. Of course, Mr. Conroy. What is it? That you permit me to help you celebrate your good fortune. How? By being my guest tonight, say, say at the Blue Moon. Oh, I'd love to. Good. Oh, by the way, I hope you won't mind meeting me there. I have some important business to attend to first. Oh, no, that's perfectly all right. What time? I'll try and make it by 9 o'clock. I'll be there. Goodbye. Until tonight. So long. You're crazy. Well, I know I am about Mr. Conroy. And they talk about a woman's intuition. Why, well, the big egg hasn't decency enough to call for you. No, no, you meet him. Mr. Conroy's a busy man, a man of affairs. Sure, plenty of affairs. You don't know what you're talking about. Me on a newspaper? I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, go on back and write your story. And don't forget to mention in Society, Carl, about me being at the Blue Moon with Mr. Jack Conroy. That'll be something new for Conroy. He's generally in the gossip column. But there's one column you'll be careful to stay out of. And what's that? The marriage licenses. <laughs>
the number, Tony. Look okay? Yeah, looks like a swell number to me. All right, girls, that'll be all. That makes three this week. Well, what of it? I want you to stay away from that manicurist. Oh, forget it. She's okay. She's after money. You're crazy. Why, she wouldn't even accept tips. Big ones, I mean. Anyway, what do you know about her? I found out plenty while she was doing my nails. You mean you've been going there just to make her believe I'm a heel? Sure. I want to save her the trouble of finding it out for herself. No wonder she wouldn't give me a tumble. Hi, Rita. Well? How do I look? Mentally, about the same as you did when you were ten years old, I imagine. Gosh, don't you notice nothing? Don't tell me you've grown a long beard. No, you could tell if I had a beard. I give up. Why, I just had my first manicure. And it's made a different man out of me. Well, it's time something did. Say, somebody giving manicures away free? Free? The boss gave the damn ten dollars to work on me. Gee, boss, I forgot. You know, Briggs, I don't know what I'd do without you. You'll be finding out very soon, sir, if you'll pardon my saying so. Now, if you mean that little matter of your back wages, that will be attended to almost immediately. Thank you, sir. Don't mention it, Briggs. I've got a shock for you. A shock? Thank you, sir. I'm thinking of getting married. Married, sir? But that isn't like you at all, sir. Oh, forgive me, Briggs. It'll be my first offense. I'm marrying money. Oh, thank you, sir. I mean, a very good, sir. I'm taking the young lady out tonight for the first time. I see, sir. Stepping out? Stepping is exactly the word. I haven't even got the taxi fare. Oh, no, sir. Oh, go on, drink it. You paid for it. Marry in haste, repent at Raynham. You know, Briggs, just to help this little marriage along, You'll have to lend me another twenty dollars. Oh, but uh, really, sir. Now, Briggs, don't you dare say, very good, sir. I had no intention of saying so, sir. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, sir. Thank you, Briggs. You know, one of these days, I'll have a great painter do a picture of you. As a quaint little Cupid, all dressed up in a bow and arrow. But uh, with the usual ribbon around my waist, I trust, sir. Oh, naturally. Very good, sir. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Conroy? I'm Conroy. What can I do for you? I... I have come to avenge my honor. Your hat, sir. Uh, won't you please be seated? Uh, Mr... Mr... Hemingway. J. Baldwin Hemingway. Hemingway. Now, what seems to be the trouble, Mr. Hemingway? It... It has been brought to my attention that you have been chasing about with my wife. But I don't think I know any wives by the name of Hemingway. Do I, Briggs? No, sir. Henderson is the closest. Oh, what an inexpressible relief. <laughs> I, I apologize, Mr. Conroy. This has been a most unfortunate misunderstanding. Perhaps <laughs> you'd better let me have that. <laughs> I, I'm very sorry this occurred, Mr. Conroy. Isn't there something that I can do to make amends? Oh, not a thing. Uh, your visit has been a pleasure. <coughs> oh, yes, there is too. I'm going out tonight and I haven't got time to go to the bank. Perhaps you can cash a check for me. Why, of course, sir. For how much? <laughs> oh, a hundred dollars. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, it's... Uh, it's nearly eight thirty. <laughs> I must be going. I'll get you a check. Oh, no, 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 no. You can repay me at any time. I... Thank you. No, indeed, not at all. It is for me to thank you. For what? Uh, for, 
for saving me for, from becoming a, a murderer. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good night. Uh, your hat, sir? Oh, uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, sir. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good night. Oh, Briggs, the next time that Cora Hemingway rings up, tell her I'm not at home. Very good, sir. A hundred dollars. And I ought to raise twenty-five on this. In one way or another, sir? Not a bad evening so far. Very good, sir. For you, sir. What do you mean? My twenty dollars, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon. Five. Ten. Fifteen. a good crowd for nine o'clock. Your manicure friend is out there all by herself. Guess she's celebrating the 2,500 bucks she's gonna get. It's a free world. Not in this place. Well, she's here. What of it? I don't want you to get ambitious ideas. That's what of it. Good evening, Mr. Conroy. Good evening, Alec. Did you get her a nice table? Yes, sir. Jack, please. For heaven's sake, Cora, go home. Don't make a scene here. I'm sorry to be late. I just couldn't get away from that director's meeting. Well, that's all right, Jack. I've been enjoying myself watching the other people. Champagne, I'll order the rest later. Very good, sir. You do like champagne, don't you? I don't. Oh, yes. I love it. Funny how having a manicure makes a fellow feel refined. I get a notion to quit this job. What for? I've come to the conclusion that being a bouncer ain't refined. Of course it's refined. Look at the classy people you mingle with. Mingle? You mean mix? Well, at least they're refined when they first get here. Yeah. Arrive in limousines and leave in patrol wagons. Well, I hope nobody starts anything tonight. Yeah, I don't want to hurt me fingernails. <laughs> Oh! Champagne's got a lot of power, hasn't it? Oh, yes. Power, speed, and a quick pickup. And a thousand smiles to the gallon. Well, here's to Lady Luck. Thank you, Jack. I am lucky. your nose, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, if you let it. But it goes to your head too, doesn't it? Of course not. That's just a superstition. Places, don't you knock when you come in here. Do I ever come in here without knocking the whole police department? As it deserves. No, and I'm getting pretty sick of it. Another thing. What became of that picture of me that was on my desk? Don't look at me. I wouldn't touch it with a clothes prop. It looks more like me than any picture I ever had taken. Maybe that's why someone threw it away. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
Right. Uh, look, I found it. And in its proper place, too. You did that, you public enemy. You told me you were off tonight. What'd you come here for, anyhow? Some expert information. Well, you've come to the right place. Say, Riley, if I were to kill someone, could you make it easy for me? Sure. I could get him to put rockers on the electric chair. I mean it. Bump him off in cold blood. Hot or cold, I wouldn't lift a finger to save you. Who are you going to kill? Some no-good guy who's out with my girl tonight. You're working too hard, son. you got to relax. How about a game of checkers? That's good for the jitters. Okay. But I get jumpy even playing checkers. <laughs> you know, Jack, I think it's wonderful the way you keep all your business meetings straight. Wonderful? Sure I'm wonderful. You've got to be wonderful to get along these days. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you see that? I can't see anything but red. But you ain't playing with red. I am. Oh, you mean you're seeing red on account of your girl. I get it. That's good. Thanks. I like it. Listen, you sap. If I felt as bad as you do about my girl being out with another guy, I'd do something about it. You're right. And I'm going to do plenty about it. And now. All right, boy, get the old Irish up. Come on, you're going to watch me kill a guy. Then you can solve the murder and be promoted to captain. Hey, that's an idea. And I'll drive you down. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Don't you think we ought to go back to the table? Sure. Yeah. No, no more for me. It makes me sneeze. All right. Look, fun's fun, Jack, but don't you think you've had enough for tonight? Oh, no. My fun is just starting. <laughs> Alex. Take this to Mr. Conroy over there, will you please? Yes, Mrs. Hemingway. Thank you. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Hello, Mamie. Oh, hello. Mind if I sit down? No, help yourself. Having a good time? Well, yes and no, or what have you. Mamie, I can't understand you. That's all right, Tony. Nobody understands me. My father was a train caller. Hmm? <laughs> That's good, you know. The love of Pete, speed it up, will you? You want me to be too late? Must be the first time in history a cop ever drove a guy to commit murder. Yeah, women generally do that. That's a good crack. Not half as good as the one you're about to have. <laughs> one good turn deserves another. You'd better go now, Tony. Here comes Mr. Conroy. What was he doing here? Well, he was just trying to make me feel at home. Looks more like you were trying to make him feel at home. Don't be silly. You don't suppose I could care anything about him. What about me? Well, that's different. <laughs> Jack, I'm warning you. I've got a screen that'll bring out the Marines. Oh, that's old stuff. Say, you haven't got a gun, have you? No, just my two good right hands. Oh. Stop. 
Jack. Oh, Dave! Yes, oh, Dave! I told you this guy was a heel. Now listen here, Haynes, I... What you need is a guardian. I can take care of myself. No, you can't. Come on, you're going home with me. Oh, no, she's not. She came with me and I'm going to take her home. Come on. I'm going home with Mr. Conroy in his car. Yeah. No, you're not, because Mr. Conroy is going bye-bye in an ambulance. Look, a fight. Why must this happen to me? Gentlemen, you can't fight here. Put them out, boys. Jack, are you all right? Yeah. Want this guy pinched for assault? Certainly. It was an unprovoked attack. Will you swear out a warrant against him? Certainly. That's swear. I've been looking forward to getting even with you for years. Come on. Serves some right standing something in a refined joint like this. Bro, look, all of them. Something told me I should have used me brass knuckles. Well, how do you like that? Swell. To think I'd ever live to see myself on the front page of a newspaper. I thought you weren't going to speak to me again. Well, I shouldn't after the way you disgraced me last night. I disgraced you. <laughs> That's a laugh. What's more, I've probably lost Jack Conroy on account of you. Are you actually taking that egg seriously? I'm going to marry him if that's being serious. It's more than serious, it's tragic. Well, money's a fast worker. Listen, Dave, it so happens that I... Well, I love Jack Conroy in spite of what happened last night. Speaking of money, have you presented your ticket to the proper official so you can collect your 2,500 bucks yet? No, not yet. Well, you better do it right away. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll get Jack Conroy to do it. If he ever comes back... Ah, you'll be back. Why don't you phone him? I will. Where can I find Miss Mamie Murphy? I'm Miss Murphy. What can I do for you? The very fortunate Miss Murphy. I am Mr. Feinberg of Feinberg, Goldberg, Sternberg, and O'Rooney, theatrical producers. Yes. Miss Murphy, you are beautiful. You are lucky. I have here a contract which will make you the biggest stage and movie star the world has ever seen. Money, riches, wealth, take your choice. Why, I can hardly believe it. Neither can I. You keep out of this, Dave. Who's that? Just a newspaper reporter. That's fine, for publicity. You mean I'll go on the stage right away? Sure. All you have to do is sign this option and win that big sweepstake. Well, adios, till you win the big race. Hello? Oh, Mr. Conroy! Of course I'd love to. Mr. Conroy's taking me to dinner tonight. I hope you don't get stuck with the check. Yes? They told me the barbershop where you live. Here I am. So what? Well, so I'm curious. They tell me curiosity killed a cat, but it certainly keeps a woman alive. Well, I know, but what's that got to do with me? Well, I was just getting to that. I want to have a little talk with you. Well, I was just going out. Won't some other time do? Well, maybe you might find this more important. And it might save us both a lot of explanation. Well, won't you sit down? <laughs> I was thinking of that. My name is Murphy, too. Miss Mamie Murphy. I'm the one who really drew Lady Luck. There's my ticket. And the cable notifying me. I'm sorry, dearie, but I thought you ought to know in case you were trying to pull a fast one. You didn't think you really drew it, did you? Why, sure I did. I had every reason to think so. I bought a ticket and they announced my name was one of the... Well, I've looked high and low for it, but I can't find it. I'm used to being disappointed. <laughs> so am I. When you've worked in a laundry as long as I have, you're beginning to think that life is just a bowl of soap suds. Yeah, or somebody digging sharp fingernails into your skin. Well, drawing this ticket's the only break I ever had. Oh, don't worry, kid. You can't lose something that you never had. Oh, it isn't that so much. It's just that I made such a fool of myself. 
I'll never be able to face that bunch at the barber shop now. Or anyone else. Oh, don't be silly. Just keep that pretty little nose up in the air. I knew it couldn't be true, because it meant happiness. Marrying the man I wanted. A stage career. Everything. A stage career? Yes, there was a big contract waiting for me if Lady Luck won the race. And they won't give you the contract if she doesn't win? Of course not. Does anybody else know you lost your ticket? Not that I know of. Well, how does this sound to you? If Lady Luck wins, you take the publicity and everything it'll bring you, and I'll take the money. What? You really would do that? Certainly. Won't it be found out? Nobody will ever know about me. Gee, Miss Murphy, you're a swell person. Oh, and maybe to you. How can I ever repay you? By giving me a cigarette. Oh, excuse me. Good evening. Hello. Oh, Aunt Mamie, this is Dave Haynes. How do you do? Oh, so this is the young man you're going to marry. Not if I can help it. Oh, well, I'm sorry, young man. I like you. Got a cigarette? In just a moment, you'll hear Jack Pemberton, eminent British horse racing authority and sport rider, giving you a dramatic word picture direct from the track of the greatest annual event in the sport of kings. Take it away, England. Thank you, America. Are you there? This is Jack Pemberton speaking to you direct from the course. The horses are lined up at the post. There goes the starter's gun. They're off. Time five takes the lead going for the first jump. Cumberland, Blue Hawk and Lorelei riding his heels. Shamrock, Black Magic and Toastmaster are punched on one side of the leader and Sir Malta and Londonderry on the other. Lady Luck and the Scotsman got a bad start at the post. They are trailing lengths behind the leaders. Here comes that long, deadly water jump. Time flight goes down. Arcturus, Lorelei and Blue Hawk pile into her. Horses and riders are in a tangled heap. The riders are motionless, probably killed. What a pity. Lady Luck is still trailing many lines. It looks hopeless for the brave little filly who won the big sweepstakes last year. The stablemate Toastmaster is also far behind the leaders. Now the crowd is going mad, your announcement included, as Lady Luck quickens her pace and begins to overhaul Beale. She's gaining. There goes Sir Moulton Hoodwink down at the next jump. Lady Luck clears it beautifully. She's fighting her way to the leaders. She's up with Londonderry and Shamrock. Another long water jump. Londonderry is down. Lady stumbles. She's down. She's out of the race. No, she's up. Her jockey hangs to her neck. He's back in the saddle. She's gaining. Uh, lady Luck is gaining. She's neck to neck with Shamrock. You can lay a pill of across their noses. The little lady pulls her head. She's leading into the finish line. The race is over. Lady Luck wins. She won! A hundred and fifty grand. Maybe you'd better be a little nice to that hangnail artist after all. What do you think I've been doing? Oh, I never dreamed luck got you so tired. My head is just splitting. Yeah, you're right. It really gets you down worse than bad luck. Maybe coffee will make me feel better. Say, did you ever see the like the way the schemers and purse trooped in the barber shop after me today? There was a line clear around the corner for wanting to sell you something or wanting you to endorse something. Yeah, everything from lollipops to limousines. I'm glad I'm out of it. I mean the publicity. Amy, have you cabled yet to claim the money? Not yet. I was afraid somebody would discover that it wasn't you who won and spoil everything. I'll attend to it in a day or two. You could have all the money that comes from the publicity in the endorsements and so on. I have no right to that. Gee, you're a swell person. <laughs> you better hurry if you were going to go out with that Conroy man. Say, you're going to like Jack Conroy. Am I? <laughs> Listen, darling, if I was young and good-looking like you, I think I'd like to marry a newspaper man. That couldn't be Conroy, could it? No, uh, I promised to meet him. Good evening, Miss Murphy. May I come in? Why, yes. Well, I'm sorry to disturb you, but I'm Feldman, William Feldman, the real estate man. Oh. Aunt Mamie, this is Mr. Feldman. How do you do? Hello. I've heard of your good fortune, Miss Murphy, and I hope I'm among the first to congratulate you. Yes. 
among the first 500. I've come to make you a business proposition. I want you to move into the very finest furnished apartment we have. Oh, I couldn't think of it. Go ahead. It won't hurt you to think of it. Of course, I'm being very selfish. It's the publicity value, the prestige of having you there that I... Well, how much is the rent? Five hundred dollars. A year? A month. But don't say no until you've seen it. Don't worry. I said no at the wrong time once. That's why I'm an old maid. Now, here's my proposition. You live in the place for 30 days. You don't like it, you don't owe me a dime. Is that fair, Aunt Mamie? I'll say it is, Willie. Like it? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Be a swell place for me to take in washing. A lot of room to hang clothes up in. <laughs> Say, who is this? <laughs> I've seen a lot of them. <laughs> Why, that is Rodin's famous statue, the Thinker. Mm. Just a carbon copy. <laughs> the Thinker, huh? I wonder what's on his mind. Who can tell? <laughs> Maybe he's trying to think where he left his clothes last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all settled. When will you take possession? Right away. Thank you. Oh, Aunt Mamie, do you think that we, I mean, you can afford it? What can we lose? We get it 30 days for nothing. If we don't like it, then we can move out. But do you think we should take it? We can take anything that's going to help you get that stage job and anything else. Oh, Aunt Mamie, I must be dreaming. Pinch me. Ouch! <laughs> Come on, honey. Let's go home and get our other shirt waist. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, for goodness... <laughs> well, Mamie, look. The neighbors are here to see us already. Mm. <laughs> Cheerful little souls, ain't they? These are the servants, Aunt Mamie. They go with the apartment. Thank goodness for that. Now I'll have somebody to scrub my back. <laughs> <laughs> you got a cigarette, buddy? Yes, madam. <laughs> Mrs. Madam, to you. I can't see any point in waiting to be married. Can you? Because from now on, you'll be the target for all sorts of schemes. With one idea, to get your money. Yes, I found that out. The sooner you have the benefit of my business experience and taking control of your financial affairs, the better. Right? Oh, yes, of course. Then suppose we make it soon. Tomorrow, if possible. All right, Jack. Let's announce it tonight. We'll give Dave the story. Yes, by all means. Let's give Dave the story. Jack, I honestly believe you're jealous. <laughs> I'm Dave Haynes. I'd like to see Mamie. Yes, sir. Um, um, which one? Use your own judgment. Yes, sir. Please be seated. A uh, Mr. Haynes to see you, miss. Oh, it's Dave. How very exciting. In that case, I'll be going. Oh, Jack, don't go yet. I'll only be a moment. Dave, I wish you hadn't come here. You're certainly being subtle about it. Mamie, I came to give you a good talking to. We have nothing to talk about. Just a minute. You're still a hot newspaper copy, if nothing else. I'm sick of being that kind of newspaper copy. Oh, now you're changing your tune. You know, you weren't exactly shying from publicity. Dave, I wish you'd go. I get it. That mug Conroy's here, and you haven't hooked him yet. Is that it? Well, that's none of your business. Everything is a newspaper man's business. All right, then it might interest your newspaper to know that Mr. Jack Conroy and I are going to be married. Thank you for a very pleasant evening. Oh, Jack, you're not going. I was just coming back. Don't bother. Oh, come on, Jack. Good night! Good night! Oh, Dave. Hello, son. 
<laughs> I forgot I'm an old maid. Ha, ah, Dave, I like newspaper men. I'm glad somebody does. Dave, you're about to give up, Mammy. Don't you do it. I got the whole story tonight. Oh, no. And don't you dare give up. Maybe I want to give up now. <laughs> you can't fool me. I'll tell you what. You let me help you, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, cover this beat. How do you mean? I keep my ears open. And if anything important happens, I'll telephone you. I get it. Thanks, Aunt Mamie. I'm afraid I must be going. I have some important business matters to attend to. Oh, Jack, surely you don't have to leave so early, especially tonight. What has tonight to do with it? Oh, nothing, except that we merely became engaged. Well, I'll call you in the morning. Good night, Mrs. Murphy. Or is it Miss Murphy? <laughs> don't let it worry you. You'll never have to fool around with it. What's the idea of the long face? You got yourself engaged, didn't you? Yeah. Well, what's the trouble? Oh, nothing, except that it isn't exactly like I thought it would be. Newspaper men ain't home much, but they tell me they're awfully affectionate. <laughs> well, what's so funny, Daddikins? I was just laughing to think how narrowly I escaped being a fool. Escaped? What? Uh, what do you mean, Daddikins? Well, I was told on good authority that you'd been chasing around with that fellow Conroy. So I went to his apartment to shoot him. Why, Daddikins, you know I've never even looked at another man since we've been married. <laughs> uh, now, please, baby, baby, don't, don't, don't faint. Popsy knows he's, he's been a great big brute and he's sorry. Oh, but to think that you doubted me. Well, uh, now, 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 there, baby. Uh, Popsy will buy you that new ermine coat he's been promising. <laughs> but don't fade. To, not till I get your smelling salts. Hello, Headache. See this about your girl going to get married? Sure, I wrote it. Guess you're about as bad as a Romeo as you are a reporter. Ronnie, there's going to be a murder in this town, and it won't be a mystery. Yeah? Who's going to be the party of the first part? You guess. Hey, I forgot. Your Aunt Mamie phoned, told me to tell you she loved you. Imagine anybody loving you. Boy, that is news. Well, news is what you're looking for, ain't it? I'll say it is. Don't you feel good? Sure I do. Why? <laughs> I must have been kidding myself all these years when I thought brides-to-be were happy. Oh, I guess I'm happy all right. It's just having everything come true at once. Yeah, just like I said before, getting everything you want sure gets you down. Of course, you know, I'd feel a lot happier if... Well, if Dave hadn't have made such a fuss when I told him. Listen, you love Dave. No, I don't, and even if I... Good morning, miss. Good morning. Will you have breakfast in bed? No, I think I'll get up. Get me my light blue crepe dress. Yes, miss. Say, did I tell you the wonderful news? No. I found my long lost sweepstake ticket. Good. Where? In the line of my coat, it had a hole in it. Is it still there? What, the hole? <laughs> <laughs> no, the ticket. I put it over there in my vanity drawer. Are you sure I can get you a cup of coffee, miss? Would you like a cup of coffee, Emily? Yeah, that's a good idea. Get a couple of cups of coffee. Yes, ma'am.
there be anything else, miss? No, that'll be all. Mm. Funny how a good cup of coffee rests a person's feet. Are your feet tired, Aunt Mamie? Yeah, a little. I was out early this morning. I had a lot of errands to do. Walked an awful lot. Well, why didn't you take a taxi? Oh, <laughs> I forgot all about it. You know, it's funny. I just can't get used to being rich. Neither can I. Oh, I mean... Oh, forget it. You know, happiness ain't what it's cracked up to be. It's something like tomorrow. It never gets here. I mean, when it comes, we don't know it's happiness. I'm beginning to think you're right. Love. That's the only real happiness, so they tell me. Anybody that gets married just for money is crazy. Yeah, that's what Dave always says. It's about time he was forgetting about what Dave always says. Oh, dear. Funny how a sleepy bee rich makes you. It's only a little after 11 in the morning and I can hardly keep my eyes open. Ooh. Ooh. Cummings, fourth vice president. Oh, Miss Murphy. I read in the papers about your good fortune. Our bank will be glad to handle the transaction for you. If you have your ticket and the necessary identification, it should take only a few hours to have the money cabled to the bank here. Well, it isn't customary, but I suppose I can. What's the address? Riverside Apartments? I'll be over as soon as possible and explain how we can handle it. Thank you. Mamie, Mamie, wake up, it's night. Come on, honey, wake up, snap out of it, it's night. Oh, my head. Well, well, what's this? What's what? I don't know, you better turn on the light. Well, Mamie, oh! It's Jack Conroy. You mean it was Jack Conroy? Well, what do we do? I understand the usual proceeding is to get the police. Oh, no, don't do that. I'll call Dave. He'll know what to do. Well, in round figures, young woman, I'd say you were in considerable of a jam. I realize that. You haven't touched or disturbed anything in your room, have you? No, nothing but that gun. Where'd it come from? It was in her hand when we woke up. That certainly helps to make things tougher. I'll take charge of this until further notice. Now we've got to call Detective Lieutenant Riley or he'll feel terribly, terribly hurt. Oh, Dave, do you think... Don't you worry. I'll take care of everything. You have your breakfast at 11 o'clock in the morning, pass out, and don't wake till 8 at night. Pretty sound sleepers, ain't you? They were doped, you dope. I'll handle this. I've solved plenty of murder mysteries. I know you have. That's the biggest mystery of all. Did you kill Conroy? Oh, for heaven's sake, Riley, use your brain. Of course I didn't kill him. She wouldn't kill a man she's going to marry tomorrow, would she? It's been done. Say, maybe you did it. Sure, when I was asleep. I might as well break down, Riley. I killed him, too. I was just coming to that. It looks pretty suspicious, you rushing up here and then saying you couldn't get in. Yes, I shot Conroy. I threw the gun through those French windows. You'll find it out there on the terrace. Getting a little close in here. Bill, get that elevator boy in here. The murderer always returns to the scene of his crime. Please, Mr. Judge, I was just looking. Take a look at that. Did you ever see him before? 
Is he dead? If he ain't, we're going to a lot of trouble for nothing. I said, did you ever see him before? Yes, sir. I brings him up the elevator around lunchtime. Did you bring him up too? Yes, sir. Before or after you did him? Just about a half an hour afterwards. I remember he come up whistling, Happy Days is here again. Then go away whistling, Gloomy Sunday. That settles it. it. Was you all right? You had plenty of motive to kill the guy that was going to marry your girl. Besides, I heard you threaten to kill him. Don't forget. Riley, elephants and I never forget. Who else did you bring up here? Them nightclub folks, Mr. and Mrs. Tony. Bill, send a car after Tony Morelli and his girlfriend. We'll catch you. Anybody else? That's all I can remember. Them white folks all look the same to me, boss. Here's Conroy's butler, Chief. That it. You can go now. Did you kill Conroy? Oh, no, sir. Do you know who did or might have? No, sir. Mr. Conroy had a large circle of lady friends, sir. Possibly a jealous husband may have done it. In fact, uh, quite recently, a gentleman called at the apartment and threatened to shoot Mr. Conroy. There you are. A jealous husband. You're barking up the wrong tree, Riley. I say it was a jealous woman. You're crazy. Fifty bucks says I'm not. Do you want to bet? Yeah, when you get the fifty. Mr. Conroy was quite a rich man, wasn't he? On the contrary, sir. He was, uh, to use an inelegant expression, flat busted. Busted? Yes, sir. He even had to borrow twenty bucks from me to take that young lady out. What did he do for a living? He called himself a financial sculptor. Financial sculptor? What's that? A chiseler, sir. Who was the husband that uh, wanted to shoot your boss? Uh, Mr. Hemingway, sir. We look into that. Get the Hemingways up here. You can go now, but stick around. Very good, sir. Still think it was a woman? A buck's worth. It's a bet. Don't let anyone leave here, Mac. I'm going to check over the joint again. I don't see how a man as thick-headed as Riley can solve anything. Thick-headed? Not Riley. He's a smart cop. He certainly fools me. The men always did fool me. Uh, playing dumb is just an act with him. He's sort of a handsome man, ain't he? Loosely speaking. You know who he really suspects, don't you? Who? Me. What? I'm in a tough spot until we can find out who killed Conroy. Dave, look what I found while I was sitting here. An artificial fingernail. Why was you going to shoot Conroy? Uh, it was a misunderstanding. Over what? Over, over business. It was over me. A terrible, terrible misunderstanding. No, 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 baby. Baby, don't faint. Uh, here are your smelling salts. Tony, did you ever see Mrs. Hemingway before? Sure, she used to come to the Blue Moon with Conroy. So, Carter was right. While I was out of town, you were playing around with Conroy. I ought to break your neck. Hey, this is a murder investigation. Settle your domestic troubles later. You killed Conroy. I did not. I have a perfect alibi. I was at the office all day, except, except at lunch. Who did you go to lunch with? My, my secretary. Why, you, you philanderer. Never mind that, lady. Let's keep our mind on this. What are you doing here? Who are you and what do you know about this murder? 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 You ought to know you did it. Who? Me? No, oh, no. I'm chicken-hearted. Did you know him? Who? The murdered man, Conroy. Conroy? Sure. You almost lost me a half a million dollars. Sure. You almost lost us a million dollars. Say, Sam, Mamie's in this. With the free publicity, she's worth $3,000 a week. Two thousand. A contract is made out already. Yeah, but it ain't signed. It's only an option. Twenty-five hundred. Two thousand. Say, this is an investigation, not an auction. You been up here today? As many times as you got fingers and toes. What for? To keep her from marrying Conroy. Why? Was a married woman, she's no good. Uh, to me, I mean. So you killed Conroy to keep from losing the contract. Look, uh, Captain, 
I like money as well as any man on earth, definitely. But I wouldn't kill anybody for it. I don't think. Here's the final contract. Sign here. Do you realize there's been a murder here? That's right. Sign right here. You think business is going to stop just because a man got killed? Oh, Chief, I found these looking for clues. Bring them here. What are you doing with that bag? That's mine. Oh, no, you don't. For the love of Mike. Whose money is that? Mine. I, I mean hers. Oh, no, it isn't. Aunt Mamie, you've got to tell them. Well, that's the prize money from the big sweepstakes. After the income tax man got through with it. She's really the Mamie Murphy who won it, not me. So? A nobody? An impasti? Yes, and I'm glad everyone knows that I'm sick of the whole thing. Yeah, Aunt Mamie, sign this contract. Get out of here, both of you. Beat it. Remember, Aunt Mamie, if you want to be notorious, don't forget Feinberg, Goldberg, Sternberg, and O'Rooney. Adios. Yes, adios. Hey, Riley, look. He drank some of this coffee. I've been trying to tell you it was drugged. I'm beginning to believe you're right. He'd be all right. Take him outside, Bill. Riley, it's as plain as your face. Somebody wanted that winning ticket, so they doped Mamie and her aunt and came here to get it. Maybe. Anyhow, a man killed Conroy. I know it was a woman. Oh, you do, huh? What woman? The woman who lost this tricked fingernail. Hmm. Let's see who lost this fingernail. No, too dark. Well, I'm out of this. I may be a little false in spot, but I don't wear fake fingernails. You got too much good sense. Bill, put the cuffs on her. Say, what's this all about? I'm arresting you for the murder of Conroy. I didn't kill Conroy. Tony, you know I didn't kill Jack Conroy. Tell this Flatfoot I didn't. Tell him I said, tell him I didn't do it. Why, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, you lying double cross and heel. I'm not taking the rap for this. He was after that sweepstick money. He planned everything, even to giving this apartment free to that Murphy dame. And the servants are part of the setup. That's why they're gone, huh? Sure. As soon as I found out where the ticket was, they doped Murphy and her aunt with coffee, then phoned Tony and scrammed. Keep going, sister. Well, I'll tell you what happened this morning. Tony and I came here as soon as we got word that the ticket had been located. Sure those dames won't wake up? Not a chance. They'll be dead of the world for hours. Here's the ticket. That must be the banker. You let him in. Hello? What are you doing here? I asked you what you were doing here. You better get out of here if you know what's good for you. Rita too, eh? Miss Murphy giving a party? Where is Miss Murphy? I don't know. She's out. Yeah, she's out. You better beat it, Conroy. No, I think I'll wait. Have you got a cigarette? Oh, don't bother. I'll take one from here. Looks as if I walked into something. I'm telling you, you better scram out of here. Tony, we'll have to cut him in on this. Cut me in? That's very thoughtful of you. Let me tell you something. I am in. I'm marrying that sweepstake ticket. It's going to cost you $5,000 to get out of this. Not a chance. No? You think not? In that case, I'd better inform the police. I caught some crooks in the act of robbing my fiancé. Blundering ah! idiot! It's going to help me fix this up.
and then we sneak down the back stairs and beat it back to the blue moon. Tony, have you got anything to say for yourself? Ask my lawyer. Take them both down. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Hemingway, you can go now. You'll have to watch your stepsister. Well, I'll take that book now. What are you doing tonight, Aunt Mamie? Anything you say, Tuts. How about you and me seeing a movie together? I am nuts about murder mysteries. That's all right with me. I won't be looking at the picture much anyway. Mamie, I'm glad you didn't win those sweepstakes, because then we never would have gotten together. I know it, Dave. I've been an awful little fool. Are you telling me? Well, is that so? You haven't been setting any worlds on fire with your own smartness. I got you out of a jam, didn't I? Well, I wouldn't have been in a jam if it hadn't have been for you. Don't yell at me! Who's yelling at you? Greetings, Hastings Mystery Theater viewers and subscribers, and welcome to all of our first-time viewers. I'm Dan LeClaire, Program Manager for Hastings Cable Access Channel. We're glad to have you aboard. Please take a minute to check out the links in the description below. There you will find a link to a bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode, as well as links to our merchandise shop, where you can buy products related to classic movie mystery themes like t-shirts, coffee mugs, and other things. And if you purchase our products, this will help us greatly. This will enable us to continue focusing our efforts on bringing you these great old mystery movies from the 1930s and 40s. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. And also, consider giving us a donation as well. And of course, like and subscribe. And as always, leave us your wonderful comments. In 1937, the world discovered Thorn Smith's topper and his vanishing girlfriend. Roared at them as ectoplasm did the darndest things. Two years later, the screen rocked anew as Topper and his glamorous ghost played hide-and-seek in Topper Takes a Trip. And now, Topper's back with a new playmate in the gayest of all their adventures. Get your cold feet off my back. You don't need all the covers, do you? Remember me, the girl that sat on your lap? Oh, oh yes, but this is hardly the place, my, my wife. I'll go, but every hair in my coat is standing on end. <laughs> now cut out the story. Who killed Gail Richards? Pick him up. In the first place, the girl they wanted to kill was Miss Carrington. Well, never mind who they wanted to kill. Who done it? I hate to go up those stairs. Would you mind coming up with me? Uh, upstairs? With you? Mm-hmm. Now? Yes. I better come back in the morning. Please. I have not be quiet. I should know that I could scream. In fact, I think I will. <laughs> Come on, let's do it together. Oh. Edward. Yes, ma'am. What in the world is wrong with you? Hey, me, it's them things. Things? Doors closing by themselves. People talking to nothing and getting answers. I'm going back. Back where? To Mr. Billy. Ain't nothing like this ever happened there. <laughs> 